Well, it's a very warm welcome back to a second half independent off tube studio commentary of uh, the uh, UEFA Europa Conference League game, uh, Group B between uh, West Ham and uh, Silkeborg. West Ham lead by a goal tonight after a penalty converted by Manuel Lanzini. Penalty itself might have been slightly controversial, but the, res uh, but the uh, scoreline is not. West Ham deserved to be in front in this game without a doubt. Uh, the much better side in the first half, trying to actually get forward, creating chances, whereas the visitors really struggle to get out of their own half and create any kind of uh, threat so whatsoever. Let's see how the uh, second half pans out. It's myself, uh, Paul Shemakovic, and uh, Ben Rogers taking you through the action. And Ben, we've seen a couple of changes from uh, Silke Ball. We'll mention those in just a moment, but uh, the, the, the style of play, the mentality has to change it from the visitors. Yeah, I'm not sh surprised that... You know, Nielsen's gone for the change in personnel, Paul, because Sainz had to change. Like you said, it thoroughly been second best for 45 minutes, and it's, it's it's good that he's been proactive with his substitutions as well. It didn't wait to they fell further behind. You know, it's one nil. The game's still safe. They could still get Sainz out of this, and that's why he's had to make these changes. 45 minutes now for these substitutions to really come into effect and make a difference in this game and try and help Silkeborg get a result. Yeah, absolutely. At 1-0 down, they can still turn this game around if they uh, start the second half with, uh, with a better mentality. No changes for West Ham at uh, half-time. And uh, it's uh, the visitors in possession now trying to uh, play out uh, from the back. They're on the uh, left-hand side with uh, Lucas Clitton. Ball played uh, forward, but that one is uh, played back to Clitton. Then a ball over the top here for one of the subs, uh, Oxen, to chase. But he is uh, dispossessed uh, by... Uh, all good. So I'll just to remind you the two sides for West Ham, it is Alphonse Ariola in goal, back four of Vladimir Tufal, Ben Johnson, Angelo Agbonna and Danae Forgerd. The uh, three in midfield are Pablo Fornaus, Connor Coventry and Emerson with Manuel Lanzini, side Ben Rama and Mikhail Antonio as the attacking three. I'll do the uh, Silkeborg side in just a second because West Ham are on the attack now. Down the left-hand side, Ben Rama and Emerson exchanging passes. Emerson thinks it was an obvious corner kick. Uh, referee uh, Jani Heiter from uh, uh, Finland thinks otherwise. It's going to be a uh, goal kick to Silkeborg. Their goalkeeper, Nikolai Larsson, a uh, back four of Robin dahl Onström, Tobias Salquist, uh, Joel Felix and Lukas uh, Klitten. Three in midfield of uh, Stefan Thord Haasen, Andreas Ogerson, who comes on for Robert uh, Goyani and uh, Andre Anders uh, Klinge. They're the three in midfield. And the three up front are uh, Soren Tengstedt, Kasper uh, Kusk, who comes on for uh, Sebastian Jorgensen. And uh, captain uh, Nicholas Hellenius is still the uh, front man. West Ham in possession down the left-hand side with uh, Emerson. Gets all the way to the edge of the area. Tries to uh, skip past uh, uh, Ostrom. And uh, referee not interested. He felt as though... Uh, they're just uh, trying to win that free kick a little bit too easily there. Oh. Was the but then it's given away at the edge of their own box here. Great chance here for Pablo Fornals who drags it wide. That's got to be 2-0 as uh, Silkeborg are playing out from the back with plenty of West Ham players still lurking at the edge of the area. The ball is given away. Pablo Fornals inside the penalty area. And Ben, he somehow manages to drag it wide. You can't miss that. But Silkeborg, see what they're doing on the ball here. They play it out and... I think it's Fogdeson in the end. It's a really poor ball. It's straight to Pablo Fornals. And like you say, he's got to score, Paul. There's no excuse. He's got that amount of room in the penalty area. And not it's not even hit the target. It's criminal, really, there from Fornals. And that's been a big sort of criticism of his game since he's arrived at West Ham a few years ago, isn't it? Just that end product. He's not quite... You know, put the numbers in for a creative attacking midfielder. It doesn't well, absolutely. Well, it, it, there are similarities with Lanzini, albeit he doesn't get as many injuries, but there's still the issue of consistency for all the talent that he has. He, he potentially should be doing that a little bit more. 12 attempts to one in this game uh, in favour of uh, West Ham. But I tell you what, it's not going to be 12 attempts uh, on target, that's for sure. West Ham have uh, struggled really uh, to test the goalkeeper. It's four attempts to one uh, in terms of efforts on target here from the, the Hammers this evening. As Ogbonna now at the edge of his own box, uh, playing it back towards Orgerd. A bit of pressure there from uh, Hellenius, but uh, not enough pressure from uh, uh, Silkeborg uh, in this uh, game in terms of pressing the West Ham defence. It may well be they're just trying to conserve their energy uh, just to try and have a bit of a big push uh, towards the end of this game. But if they're two or three down by then, it's going to be too late. They've got to try and do something uh, just to get uh, on the ball a little bit more here, the visitors. But here is uh, Connor Coventry now down the left-hand side looking for Emerson. Just asking a little bit too much there. But again, uh, rushing into that was uh, Tobias Salquist. He wasn't forced to backheel that just to put it out of play to anywhere. But that's what he does. So West Ham get a bit of a gift of possession here at the edge of the uh, uh, Silkeborg penalty area. Emerson takes the throw, which is put straight out for another throw. Looking around for potentially a longer option here. Emerson gets it in towards Antonio, who uh, skips away from two Silkeborg players, gets that ball into the penalty area, Coventry then tries to get it back towards uh, Mikhail Antonio but he's uh, well marshalled there by Onstrom and it's uh, cleared in the end down the uh, right hand side, it stays in play as well so potentially a chance here now for Silkeborg but Hellenius 
is forced to go a long way back here towards uh, substitute to Augustin. Now it's with Anders uh, Klingay down towards uh, Clitten down the left-hand side. Back to uh, Klingay again. So it leaves the ball here now for uh, Tankstead. Just trying to keep a bit of a midfield possession here, our uh, uh, Silkeborg. But again, it's it's all inside their own half, really. Not able to make uh, too much uh, of a, a foray into the West Ham half as it's now played back by uh, Salquist towards his own goalkeeper. Too much uh, pressing here from West Ham. They just uh, sat back a little bit deep and perhaps hoping to try and uh, pick off a long ball if it's going to be cleared. It's uh, Silkeborg insisting on the playing out from the back. Kasper Kusk, uh, the other substitute, has dropped a little bit deeper now. Just to keep his side in possession. Over towards the uh, left-hand side, Tankstead. Leaves the ball now for uh, Klingate. Side to uh, Augustin. But uh, West Ham keeping their line fairly resolutely here. And they're not really being tested. It's uh, more of the same really from uh, Silkeborg that we saw in the first half. And then eventually a ball through the middle from uh, Klinge. Picked off uh, by Ogbonna. West Ham have possession now here with uh, Connor Coventry. Square to uh, Lanzini. And uh, Pablo Fornau is now on the ball. So we saw there a good spell of possession from uh, Silkeborg. But they could barely even get into the West Ham half. Similar to the back end of the first half, ball, wasn't it? But it's... Is it Silkeborg having possession of the ball through their own might or is it West Ham just allowing them to have possession of the ball in that area and then trying to catch them out as we've already seen they've done plenty of times. So I do think the Silkeborg substitutions have made them stronger. Certainly Kasper Kursk, he's of course scored in a reverse fixture, had a late fitness test which is why he didn't start this <coughs> game. But it'd be interesting to see how he gets on because you know he's a very direct player and if he can get one-on-one -on -one with Angelo Ogbonna, of course Ogbonna, he's not the fastest or most he's mobile not. of fullbacks. I feel like that could be a potential success area for the Danish Ogbonna. Well, Ogbonna's not the quickest and uh, Orgard's not the most experienced. So there are there are potentially some holes, some uh, weak spots in that West Ham defence, but you've got to test that. You're not gonna, they're not just going to present themselves. You've got to try and uh, create the opportunities to actually uh, expose that uh, West Ham defence or if there are going to be any uh, unforced errors in that West Ham defence. There's two fouls stepping forward there just to make sure that ball doesn't reach uh, Lucas Clitten. Out for a uh, throw to Silkeborg down the left-hand side in towards uh, Augustin. Under pressure there uh, from Ben Rama. Gets it in towards uh, Thod Harson. And now it's Tobias uh, Salquist, the big centre-back. He looked up, thought about a long ball, but West Ham are playing quite a high offside line, so that's not going to work. And it's uh, Silkeborg push forward down the right-hand side here. Thod Harson inside uh, towards Kusk. He then uh, switches play over towards the uh, left-hand side. Here is uh, Klinge now looking to shoot. Gets the shot away as well. And it's the first bit of work for uh, uh, goalkeeper Alphonse Ariola. It's still a routine save, but uh, the fact that uh, after all that, eventually Silkeborg do get a shot away, and it was pretty much an uh, uh, uncontested shot. No one trying to close him down. That certainly won't please David Moyes. Yeah, as you mentioned there, I'm not quite sure what West Ham's midfielder doing here because <coughs> they're backing off and backing off into the back line in the end. And Klinge's, the, the shot opportunity's opened up for him, and a good opportunity there as well to test Ariola in the end. His effort, it's not a bad one, but it was never really going to test Ariola. It was really comfortable for the Frenchman in goal, but just couple of worrying signs there for West Ham because they were just allowing Klinge to make inroads in a dangerous position. Well, West Ham trying to make some inroads now with uh, Lanzini. What a great run. This is threads the ball through to Ben Rama. They've all got their hands up for offside and the flag does go up now <coughs> with a, a very brief delay. Albeit, of course, uh, all these decisions have to be made live. As we mentioned in the first half, no video assistance in these uh, UEFA Conference League games. And I tell you what, that is... Just. The tip of the kneecap is offside there. Very, very close. It was actually lucky, probably for the full official as well, that the linesman, I should say, he was, Ben Rama's run was actually made on the 18-yard line. And you can just see his arm was just over that line, whereas the defender, the Silkeborg centre-half there, I think it was Joel Felix, was just behind the line. So that line actually sort of acted as an imaginary offside line there. It did, yeah. The it did, so but it made uh, the decision easier. very, very tight, that one. And uh, as I say, certainly uh, West Ham, would have uh, been frustrated if uh, he'd have finished that off, uh, Ben Rama. Then it had turned out that the offside was as close as it was. But uh, Sil Silkeborg in the meantime, in a bit of possession here in midfield, trying to just find some more space in the West Ham half. It's with uh, Kusk now down the right-hand side. Options ahead of him. He tries to thread that ball through. It's just behind Klinge, though. And uh, West Ham now with a chance to counter as uh, Ben Rama brings the ball forward. He needs some support, though. He's got Fornells up ahead of him. Fornells plays it straight back to Ben Rama, and that is uh, picked off uh, by Augustin, who just looks a little bit more busy in that central midfield, doesn't he, since he's come on? Yeah, he's, uh, to be honest, I actually thought 
that Guani actually had an all right half. If I was to take one of the three off, it probably would have been Klinge, but I guess Guani's the most defensive side of the three, so it's simple coming well, in. Well, Kuska, off. great ball down the uh, left-hand side, and a strike coming in, and that forces a much more acrobatic save from Ariola. It was uh, Soren Tengstead from the left-hand side testing the West Ham keeper, and uh, that is the first bit of acrobatic work that uh, goalkeeper Ariola's had to do this evening. Angles were on his side, I would say, because it was a left-footed shot fired at his near post. But even so, he's still got to make the save. Of course, Tankstead scored in this reverse fixture as well. Looking to score home and away against the Hammers. And in the end, he's like saying an acrobatic save from Ariola. He's actually got a really strong hand. He stayed alive. He had to stay alert because he's not been tested all game. But in the end there, he, when, when called upon, he's done really well, Ariola. And he's made, already made a couple of big saves in this European campaign. I think back to the end of that game as well. He's had to make some big saves here as he's become West Ham's uh, European goalkeeper. And the ball is uh, swung in from that uh, left-hand side, punched away by Arlova, straight towards the edge of the area. And uh, another chance here for Silkeborg, potentially, but the ball played out towards uh, Klinge, just a little bit under hit as uh, Tufal clears it. He's very frustrated with the referee uh, when he sees that it's been given as a uh, throw to uh, Silkeborg rather than a throw to West Ham. Uh, but we can see now Kent uh, Nielsen stepping out uh, from the uh, dugout towards the edge of the technical area. Looks like he's carrying a bit of an injury himself, <laughs> the uh, Silkeborg manager. He looks so happy to get up out of his no, seat, didn't he? No, he's hobbling a little bit there as he was heading towards the edge of his uh, technical area. But uh, you'll see the smallest signs that his side are just trying to show a little bit more uh, fight in this game. Whilst they're only 1-0 down, they always feel as though they've got uh, half a chance of uh, getting back into the game. But here come West Ham now with uh, a good exchange here between uh, Ben Rama and Emerson. Emerson gets to the edge of the area where he was marshalled by uh, Anders Augustsson. We'll play back to Larson. The goalkeeper clears it up towards the halfway line where Ogbonga gets the uh, deflection off uh, uh, of, uh, Hellenius. Uh, throw to West Ham. Down the left, it goes uh, back towards the edge of the uh, West Ham penalty area. It's uh, Ogerd playing it back towards Ariola. Thought about the long ball, but uh, sees an easy pass here in midfield to uh, Connor Coventry. Ogbonga now down the left towards uh, Emerson. Game just needs a little something to just uh, spark it into life here. West Ham... Quite happy to play at a walking pace here as Ogbonna now brings it forward. Finding Pablo Fornau who runs straight into trouble here. And uh, Silkeborg now, oh, that's a poor touch from uh, Kuski. Had time there to try and thread it through to a teammate. But it's uh, West Ham back in possession now with Emerson down the left-hand side. In towards Ben Rama, back towards uh, Emerson. Ben Rama trying to go on the run down the left. He felt as though he was being brought down and I think the referee agrees. Yeah, I think he's a bit lucky there, Ben Rama. I feel like he was already going over, sort of on the turf, but there was a slight contact from Olstrom, and Ben Rama went over, and the referee gave the free kick, which West Ham have taken quickly. But I do feel like Silkeborg have, you know, been a bit better at the start of this half. They're trying to, to be just a little bit more expansive, but here come West Ham now again. It's Ben Rama and Emerson down the left. Emerson breaks into the box, gets all the way to the byline, puts a ball in, which gets a couple of deflections before it's cleared away, and then uh, referee thought about stopping play because the ball deflected off him. But uh, uses his uh, in-game management there to decide that he, he can play on because the Silkeborg players had it. West Ham then win it back and the ball is played to Antonio who tries to turn on the run. He does turn on the run but he can't get the shot away. It's cleared away from him and back into uh, midfield. But uh, yeah, game just starting to pick up a little bit of pace now. Yeah, and I think this open game actually favours West Ham with the attacking players that they've got on the pitch. Silkeborg are going to have to start opening up because they know that this result, whether it's 2-0 or 3-0, doesn't really make a difference. So whilst it's 1-0, they might as well open up and really go for it and try and get back onto level terms and actually search for a winner because they know that the win will secure them qualification as Flynn Downs is being readied by Kevin Nolan there. So we'll be looking, West Ham's looking to be a bit more solid in the midfield because, like you say, the Augustin sort of energy in the midfield has started to make the, b the battle a bit, you know, a bit more even because... Yeah, absolutely. I, th I, th I think that, I think it's a, it's a fair point. If you're gonna if if you know that uh, losing the game is, is what's gonna put you under pressure, then you might as well lose it two or three and try and go for the win. I agree with you 100. percent And uh, West Ham certainly. I've got a couple of uh, uh, first team players on their bench as well: Cresswell, Suchek, Zuma, uh, Rice, uh, Kecha. Uh, they're on the, all on the bench uh, this evening. Skamaka as well. Uh, so if uh, needs be, David Moyes can certainly boost his uh, his 11 out on the pitch uh, to make sure that uh, the job is done. But uh, for the time being, it's the players out there that are trying to get the job done. They win the ball back in midfield. It's floated over by Pablo Fornals. He finds Mikhail Antonio, who didn't even get a chance to get his shots away because the referee stopped play. And it looks like it's been given as a handball against uh, Pablo Fornals. 
And so just lip reading there uh, with the censorship, of course, he said something along the lines of no way, which <laughs> suggests to me that he obviously felt as though there was no handball there, but uh, didn't, didn't get a chance to see a replay. And it's Silkeborg playing forward now, but uh, Kuski stopped with a good challenge uh, from Orgerd. I've been impressed with Orgerd and I've been, I've been impressed with Coventry this evening as well, yeah. the two youngsters. Oh God, of course, making his debut. And he's a, a Colossus at the back, hasn't he? Look, he's just seen it there. He's not really had an awful lot to do, but he looks comfortable in possession of the ball and he reads the danger really well. He's, he's got a good turn of pace as well, which I think, you know, if he's going to be the starting centre-back, probably alongside Kurt Zuma, that could be a really nice partnership going forward for West Ham. Of course, both young lads as well and both got bright futures at the club as kind of commentary as well. Like, as you say, West Ham will be lucky to have, you know, Flynn Downs, Declan Rice, we don't know how much longer they're going to have Declan Rice for. So having the likes of Downs and commentary, these two youngsters as replacements, it's, it's a very good, you know, ha healthy problem for David Moyes. Absolutely. Well, you, you think that it is, it's a matter of time before Rice moves on there, do you? I, yeah, it's one where, you know, he's, well, he's such an integral part for club and for country now, of course. One of the first names on the team sheet for Gareth Southgate. And although West Ham, you know, they're doing really well, progressing, you know, Europa League semi-finals last season. Hopefully they'll be looking to get forward in this competition this season. I just feel like, you know, with these bi the big clubs sniffing around, if it's only a matter of time before perhaps one of the top six do make a move for Declan Rice because he is such a good player. He is such a good player, but he'd have to, he'd have to also be very careful about it because uh, I'm not saying that he would move to a bigger side and, be, and not be in the team, but would he be a guaranteed uh, starter, a guaranteed first 11 player in a, a top four, a top six side? We'll come back to that maybe in just a moment because here come West Ham, lovely move down the left, finds Emerson breaking into the box. He tries to get a cross in. Uh, well marshalled there by Anders uh, Klinge coming back into his own box. Ball deflects out for a uh, corner kick. So it's a, a chance now for uh, West Ham to get uh, players into the penalty area. Emerson is over on this uh, left-hand side himself. But he is a left footer, so it may well be that they're going to get a right footer in there as well. Uh, just to try and get a bit more of an in-swinger. So plenty of West Ham players forward. It's only the fourth corner kick we, uh, we've had in the game. West Ham have had uh, three of them. Uh, just the uh, lone solitary corner kick for uh, Silkeborg. It is going to be an in-swinger. It's going to be uh, the right foot of Pablo Fornells to send this one towards the edge of the six-yard box. It's over the head of two players. It drops perfectly here to Ben Rama. Ben Rama sets himself, shoots, and the goalkeeper makes the save. It's almost like it was played in slow motion there. Ben Rama had so much time. You don't normally expect that in a, a European game that the ball just drops to you at the edge of the six-yard box, and you've almost got too much time to set yourself he did a good dummy there. They sold the dummy, then the shot saved by the goalkeeper. Yeah, Augustin actually slips over. And ben Rama, as you say, sells Augustin then with a the dummy, and then through the legs of Sal Quis. And in the end, it's actually the block on the line from Jal Felix. He's beaten the goalkeeper. But Jal Felix has just about blocked it. I was expecting the net to bustle. Here comes another corner from West Ham. We Whip, whipped in by Emerson and headed on at the edge of the six yard box by Ben Johnson, but then it's cleared away back into midfield. The uh, last man back for West Ham just by the centre circle there was uh, Connor Coventry. And he leaves the ball for uh, Emerson. Pablo Fornell is now trying to get towards the penalty area. He stopped though, having to uh, track back. And he goes back towards the uh, halfway line. Coventry uh, in towards uh, Fornells. Lanzini is on this uh, left-hand side as well. It's uh, his penalty. That's uh, given West Ham the lead in this game. 63 minutes gone. Independent off Tube Studio commentary. It is still West Ham 1, uh, Silkeborg 0. And uh, the Hammers enjoying a lot of possession now in midfield. But not really able to get forward. Uh, so Gerd tries a, a long board and it's a good ball as well to find uh, Ben Rama down the left-hand side. Lanzini's there with him. Ball has gone to Lanzini now. Ben Rama carried on his run, but Lanzini tries a more elaborate ball in to pick out to uh, Emerson. Just underplayed it. The idea was right to execution. Not quite, though, from Manuel Lanzini. And now a ball down the left-hand side here for a uh, Kasper Kusk to chase, but he's not going to get on the end of that one. Just a bit uh, too much pace on that, and it's out for a uh, throw to West Ham down the right-hand side. Uh, two foul waiting to uh, take it and uh, Kevin Nolan with the iPad giving uh, Skamaka his last uh, few instructions so we're potentially going to see Mikhail Antonio getting the hook very soon yeah in January Skamaka and, and Flynn Downs as well he's stripped and ready so we're looking to see them two come on soon and it makes sense because like I said earlier on in the commentary pool they've got a big game against Manchester United Sunday so they want to be rotating the players and making sure everyone's going to be fully fit for that game and especially in West Ham have just started to pick up their form in the, in the latter end of, in this sort of last few games haven't they of course the conference league and the victory against Bournemouth on Monday as Silkeborg almost got in behind there didn't they yeah it was almost like a, a bit of a delayed reaction there Stefan uh, Ford Harsen had chased that one down towards the edge of the area he assumed he might be offside then it turns out he wasn't no West Ham player really tracked him and by the time he got towards the ball a West Ham player was going back with him but so the other's a half chance uh, potentially not converted there 
by a Silkeborg. West Ham are back in possession here in midfield and it's with uh, Pablo Fornells. That's a really good ball as well to uh, pick out uh, Tufal. Takes it down on the chest. Tufal gets to the edge of the area. Then it's a left-footed cross to pick out Fornells. Nobody watches him. Fornells gets to the edge of the six-yard box. Plays it square to Mikhail Antonio who tucks it into the back of the net. But the flag uh, is already up. And uh, we'll wait and see. We've had a couple of uh, very close decisions. Is... Uh, 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 yes, he is. Pablo Fornals is offside on this occasion when that ball is played to him, so uh, no issue with that decision. It's really bad from Fornals. Though. Like, he's got he's pulled off his man really well, and the f I'm not quite sure where Robin Olstrom is there. I mean, meant to be marking Pablo Fornals. Fornals has drifted into acres of space at the back post, but he cannot be offside there. He's off the back of the defender. And it's also, as you said, because he, he doesn't need to be. I, if he stays in line, he still gets on the end of that ball anyway. He's gained no advantage from that to marginal offside. It's just a, a careless there from uh, Pablo Fornals. Those are the fine margins that uh, you expect players, top players to uh, be able to uh, decipher but uh, West Ham they're hunting for that second goal because they know that uh, whilst it's 1-0 there is always that chance that uh, Silkeborg could come back and here comes uh, Tankstead now down the left uh, just threading a ball through towards Felix who's got forward this time the big centre back and he plays it back towards Kusk left footed ball in from Kusk and uh, Ogbonna jumps for that one I'm not sure did he get a touch on that he did get a touch on that so it's out for a throw to uh, Silkeborg down the right-hand side. So they're slowly edging forward now for a moment. I don't think Andrew Ogbonna's had this most convincing game, Paul. And it's the same as that. It seems as if he sort of jumped to get the ball, but he didn't really get off the ground, did he? And in the end, he just sort of flicked it back, and he's lucky there's not a Silkeborg player behind him. It was him. almost like he did it out of routine, that he's got to head a ball away inside his own box, but actually he didn't need to. He could have just left that, and uh, West Ham wouldn't have been any the worse for it. But uh, here come Silkeborg again now down the uh, left-hand side. So uh, Klingate can't find an easy route to goal, just uh, playing it back towards the halfway line. Here is Andreas uh, Augustin now. Square to uh, Salquist. Playing it forward. Kursk in a bit more space, clipping a ball over the top here for Hellenius, who takes it down. He tries to turn, but the trouble is he's trying to turn with two West Ham players around him. And in the end, it's uh, Ben Johnson that wins the ball back. And then playing a nice one-two here with two foul. They uh, get out of problems. And in fact, there was a foul there as well, which the referee has just spotted. And uh, West Ham can now make this double change with Skamaka and Downs uh, getting ready to come on. We'll just wait and see who's going to be replaced. And also we can see that uh, Silkeborg are making another change. Yeah, I presume it's going to be Antonio and perhaps Connor Coventry. But well, it's going to be Pablo Fornals for Flynn Downs. Pablo Fornals, yep. Fornals uh, going off here. And uh, Flynn Downs to uh, come on for these last uh, 22 minutes. Really going to shore things up now, aren't they, West Ham? I mean, with that Downs and commentary in the midfield, that's two midfielders that will work hard for you, but they'll just sit in front of the back four and just be really, really solid. And that saves that David Moyes, he's not too worried about a second or a third goal, just wants the three points and to get the job done today. He did, and we see that side Ben Rama's gone off, so this is going to be Skamaka and Antonio uh, playing together up front for, uh, for West Ham. So a potentially a creative player taken off the field, but also another forward uh, coming on here. This also means that Antonio might be able to uh, to drop a little bit because he can play in a more wide role if needs be. And Skamak can go forward. We're going to see a change here for uh, Silkeborg as well. Looks like a double change. Uh, Niklas uh, Hellenius is off. And uh, he's been replaced. Is that uh, Adamson who's come on? Tony Adamson has come on to replace him. And there's going to be another change here as well. Uh, so we can see... And it's uh, the number 17, uh, Mads uh, Koland, who is getting ready to uh, come on. For Klinge. For uh, Klinge, absolutely. So, uh, change uh, up front and a change uh, in midfield as well. So, it's Tony Adamson, the number 23, who's uh, come on to uh, replace uh, Hellenius. And it looks like Klinge is off uh, to be replaced by the number 17, uh, Mads uh, Koland. Uh, Mads Koland is uh, on the field now for these uh, last 20-odd minutes as well. So, uh, Another double change there, trying to uh, force the issue a little bit, uh, is uh, Kent Nielsen. But uh, we're over the uh, three-quarter mark of the game. It is uh, West Ham 1, Silkeborg 0, and it will be Ben to take us through to full-time. Much more evenly matched second half, and Silkeborg without really creating anything, but they did have an opportunity just before the substitutions there. It was a really nice ball in from Kursk, and it was well brought down from Helenius, who's now been taken off the Silkeborg captain. But I just feel you know, he's a really right-footed player, Helenius, isn't he? And he's wanted to take too many touches and in the end it was obvious what he was going to do and Ben Johnson dispossessed him would have liked to see him hit that after that first touch but he brought it down 
brought the ball down really well. And if he just hit it out of his left foot, he really could have got a shot away on target there, just a few yards out. But he was just so eager to get the ball back onto his right foot. And in the end, it wasn't really on, was it? No, it wasn't. And that, that's the thing. I think sometimes players are too convinced that they have to go for the ball with their better foot when really they should trust themselves from... Uh, Certainly from close range, they should trust themselves with, with uh, both feet, really. But uh, the job's still not done for West Ham. They've got uh, uh, 20 minutes to play here. And uh, considering they've done so well so far in this European campaign, when winning four out of four, considering how much of an advantage they've had this evening, they'd be very frustrated if they didn't make it five out of five from here. But as it's only 1-0, there may be a chance the ball goes over the top here. But uh, Ariola is out to make the save. So that second goal still needs to be scored here by West Ham. Yeah, and Adamson, a different type of striker to what we've just seen from the Silver Ball captain, Hellenius. He'll be willing to run in behind and really stretch this back line and always play on the shoulder of the final man. And maybe that's what Silver Ball needed because Hellenius just couldn't quite get involved. Although he's a brilliant finisher, Hellenius, he has to have the ball at his feet and he's always looking for balls in the air as well as Sue Fowles brought down there by the substitute Corland and a bit of afters between Corland and Sue Fowles there. Sue Fowles had a word of him. He wasn't too happy with the tackle on him and he's having a word with the referee Johnny Hittier as well. So he wasn't quite happy with that. Was that in fact Clinton on Sue Fowles? Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, I think that he's... Um He's tried to. Uh, he's tried to get the. I don't think there's that much maliciousness in what uh, Clinton has done, but uh, Tufel obviously unhappy with that. A ball through the middle there. This could work from Skamaka. So he brought the ball down really well. Really dropped deep there, the Italian forward, and in the end, I think he's just played the wrong pass. Michel Antonio was being marked by a man, but West Ham had a man over there with. Vladimir Sufau, and if he just looked up and found his Czech Republic fullback, West Ham had a momentarily three on one with Flynn Downs breaking down the left as well. And this game is really starting to open up now. 71 minutes played at the London Stadium. West Ham United 1, Silkeborg 0, Europa Conference League Group B match. West Ham looking to make it 15 points out of a possible 15. A perfect record for David Moyes' men. And Manchester United have instantly just doubled their lead at Old Trafford against Sharif Tiraspol. That's 2 0 there, and that ensures Manchester United will be qualifying in that group but with Real Sociedad also winning United we'll be hoping to as Skamaka comes forward here and but Man yes, sorry about that Skamaka just went forward with a long ball Manchester United incidentally will be through with their double, double the lead against Shriftura Sport as Vladimir Sufal looks to whip the ball in cleared away well by August and out for a West Ham United throw in and no, it's, been a, it's been a good season for the English teams in, uh, in Europe you've got to say across the uh, UEFA uh, the, the, across the uh, Europa League, uh, Conference League and in the Champions League our sides are doing well and uh, certainly West Ham will be looking to, to get through in this game they don't really look at, like fr from Silkeborg's point of view I think that they, they, they've had their moments but it's, it's the fact they've not been able to consistently put West Ham under pressure it's almost like West Ham are putting themselves under pressure now because they know there's still less than you know nearly 20 minutes to play and they're only a goal up. But really, when you look at the chances the Silka will have had, they've been few and far between. West Ham have missed a couple of good chances in this second half Clinton as well. Clinton it long to Cusk. And Cusk looks to flick on towards Adamson. It's hooked away by Egard. Might be a good ball into Skamaka, but headed away by Sal Quis to Clinton. Under pressure from Soufal and just about keeps the ball, prevents the corner and Jal Felix can clear, but only as far as Ben Johnson who chests it down and plays it to Coventry. Coventry. Looks to flick round the corner, but he can't quite do that. It's blocked by Corland and behind, oh, or out for a West Ham United throw in 72 and a half minutes played at the London Stadium. West Ham with a narrow lead from the Manuel Lanzini penalty and Ben Johnson, good bit of work there, but his pass is just too wide for Vladimir Sufau and Silke will have it again as Sufau brings down Clitton. Those two are having a little personal battle after the afters they had earlier and Sufau's brought him down. He shakes his head but he did have hands, both hands on the Silke Borg left back and David Moyes seems a bit animated on the touchline, just telling his players to calm down. Yeah, he was shouting yeah. Vlad as in get to Vladimir and then he just said calm down. I think he was basically saying to, to Sufau that doesn't need to get involved in this personal battle with a, a silker ball player. Just concentrate on your job and make sure you don't give any easy free kicks away. Don't get an unnecessary yellow card because uh, West Ham are very much in control here. And if they start putting themselves under too much pressure, that, that's when the mistakes could come. Definitely. And I feel that probably what's helped Silkeborg into the game. Of course, the change of personnel have definitely improved as a side. But West Ham just haven't quite been as good as they were in the first half. They've sat off a bit and here comes Silkeborg again. The offside flag has gone up against Fordison. He looked as if he did straight offside and they agreed as West Ham already another change. It could be Timo Kerra is going to be coming on perhaps. Yeah. Is this going to be Vladimir Sufau you'd expect because of... Could be for Sufau perhaps just uh, looking a little bit uh, uh, getting a little bit frustrated there with the uh, Silkeborg player. It may be that uh, they feel 
potentially Ogbonna because he's uh, just a caution away from suspension, of course. And so interesting to see there. But yeah, or Orged, who's not had to, not had too much time on the pitch either. So <laughs> Can we any any of the back four yeah, already? Pretty probably. much, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's 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 it just shows you that David Moyes do knows that this game isn't done yet. That. Uh, you know, he's, he's made a couple of changes going forward, but now he feels that he might have to brilliant make a change in defence as well. Sorry, Paul. Brilliant there we're from Flynn's down as Skamaka picks the ball up and just couldn't quite poke it through there. The Italian, he looks keen to win the ball back, but he can't. And really good football there from Silver Balls to play their way out. And momentarily, they've got a three on three with Aronson, Adamson, I should say, who finds Tangstead. And Tangstead can find Kusk. Kusk now out wide towards Clitton. Clitton under tackle from Sue Fowl and then. Silkeborg forced to go backwards, but it was a promising attack momentarily, but just a wrong pass in the end. And But they will retain possession, the Danish side, with Ogsen. And Ogsen will find Clitton. Clitton under pressure from Coventry. Goes back to his midfielder who finds Ogsen, the substitute, into Tankstead. who's take up more of a central role in this second half. He's playing what wide of a, a three in the first half, but now it's as if he's look, looks as if he's dropped into the midfield. Clitton under pressure from Sufal. Sufal wins the ball back and then he's brought down. Good work there for the Czech Republic fullback. And it's going to be a booking for Clitton. It's totaled up, as referee says, one, two, three times now that you've done that. And he goes into the referee's book. That's the first caution of the day for the Danish outfit as Sufal. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that he's. I, I don't think he can have any complaints there, Clitton. I think it is for accumulation of fouls. A little bit uh, cynical, that last one as well. So I think the referee was absolutely right to show him the yellow. You're probably getting fed up of the battle that these two have had in the last couple of minutes as well. And just nip yeah, exactly. Just just get uh, just get everybody, uh, just calm everybody down. And it's going to be, uh, uh, it is going to be uh, Naif Ogerd who gets uh, the hook with uh, 15 minutes to go here. And he's going to be replaced uh, by Tio Keha. So it's uh, a very strong change here from West Ham. Bringing on a, a promising young uh, bringing off a, pro a promising young uh, it's the defender and bringing on a far more experienced one. So it's David Moyes just trying to shore things up in defence now. For Paris Saint-Germain, player, of course, Tino Carapé. He's got a whole host of European experience, of course, playing in the Champions League for the French outfit. And 76 minutes is Nathan Argard's, Naif Argard's debut for, oh, wow, it's an awful first ball from Tino Carapé. He's picked the ball up, first touch of the game, and he's knocked it out wide n under no pressure at all. For a Silkeborg throw in Agar's debut last 76 minutes. We'll get Paul's thoughts on his debut momentarily, but we'll break off for that for now as Kusk has an opportunity to get forward against the West Ham back line. There's not much on in a way of blue shirts moving, so he's had to force to go back, but Silkeborg will retain possession, and it's with Sal Quist, and Sal Quist has to go all the way back to Nikolai Larson, as he's had to do so many times today because there's just not a lot of movement, and even the movement has been tracked well by the West Ham outfit and it looks as if Flynn Downs is just playing the furthest forward of the three and it's the position he took up on Monday against Bournemouth and he, he played that really well actually so it'd be interesting to see if whether David Moyes has perhaps sort of changed the way that he's seen Flynn Downs now before seeing him sort of in the Declan Rice role but now perhaps sees him more in an advanced role one to look out for over the course of the season as Olstrom looks towards Adamson but it's well intercepted by West Ham and Ben Johnson wins the ball back well there against Adamson and then Sue Fowl plays it into Downs. He looks to flick out wide to Ben Johnson. He does that well. And Ben Johnson now looks for a big switch towards Skamaka. He's going to find his Italian striker. Brilliant control from Skamaka. And Skamaka has Antonio ahead of him. And he has Flynn Downs out wide. And in the end, he can't find either of them. And his attempted long ball towards Downs goes by for a goal kick. But yeah, what did you make of Vygaard's debut? I, I thought he did well. I thought that, that, that uh, I suppose it's an ideal debut for him because he wasn't tested very much. I mean, he did, didn't have too much work to do. But on a few occasions, he stepped forward and put a couple of good balls across uh, from uh, left to right. Uh, on a few occasions, when West Ham did have a little bit of work in that defence, I think that, uh, that, he, that he stepped forward and, and did very well. And what you mentioned about Flynn Downs is interesting as well, I think, because what David Moyes would want is for him to be able to do a little bit of both. I think he, if he can sit back and have that uh, sort of Declan Rice style to, to his game, then there certainly won't be anything uh, wrong with that. But you do also want him to be able to, to range a bit further forward and so these sorts of games where there is pressure, but at the same time, West Ham are in control. It's a great way for a young player to get that sort of experience. Yes, indeed. As Adamson looks to get behind there. And Kerry can't quite do it. Can Adamson get ahead of Ariona? He can. But in the end, the Frenchman does enough and just about gets a glove on it, which sort of pats it into the knee of Adamson and behind for a goal kick. But Kerry's just not quite up to the pace with the game at the moment, is he? No, he's coming to the game and he is a little bit off the pace. You're absolutely right. As the ball is played over the top, 
And uh, Keke just plays that straight into uh, Adamson. And then it's, a, it's good work from Ariola to make sure he just gets hands on the ball and doesn't uh, even give a hint of any chance of uh, bringing the man down as well. And it's really frustrating there for, for, from Adamson's point of view. But, yeah, just hooking that ball there, Keke, and had no idea where it was going to go. He was really lucky, actually. The Ariola was out as fast as he was. And like you say, does really well to get both hands on the ball and just sort of pats it into the knee of Adamson as Skamaka is judged to have brought down his man. He's going to get a yellow card for that, Skamaka. I didn't quite see it in real time. It looked as if he did catch sort of the head area with his training arm, but I'm not quite sure whether it should be a caution. As we look at it again, I mean, that's a really harsh yellow card. Well, he's, I suppose from, from where the referee stood, it looks as though Skamaka doesn't need to do that to try and get on the end of the ball. I think the referee's argument would be that he was just a bit too physical in trying to, to get towards the man. But, uh, yeah, I, I wonder if that same challenge gets a, a, a yellow card after 10 minutes of the game. I think the referee's probably doing it because he's seen a couple of uh, little rivalries. We saw a two foul getting involved a little bit earlier, and perhaps he just wants to rein it in with a yellow card or two. But I agree. I think that was probably quite harsh on Skamaka there. You'd think this would be a chance for Silkeball to load the box, but they don't really seem too keen to get in there, which is interesting because we've got 80 minutes played here. They've not really been able to test West Ham yet, and they trail by a goal to nil. But instead, they would just decide to keep possession and try and work their way in by being patient. And that's exactly what they're going to do with Oxen. And Oxen finds his centre-back, Salquist. Salquist out wide right towards Fogderson, the Icelandic international, who finds Kusk. Kusk is under pressure from Flint Downs. And Flint Downs forces him back. But only as far as Oxen. Oxen plays a nice ball into the feet of Corland there. But Corland dispossessed as far as Jao Felix, who's long raking switch finds Olstrom and Olstrom's under pressure by Skamaka and behind for a Silkeborg throw in but Silkeborg just started to improve in the last sort of five minutes of this game Paul and West Ham have not really seen a lot of the ball, are they? They're not. They're, we've had these little phases in the game already where, where West Ham have just stepped off a little bit. Silkeborg are able to get forward, have a bit of possession. They still struggle to create a goal mouth chance, but here comes Skamaka with a great run. Skamaka, really powerful run, as Paul's mentioned there. And this time, his switch of play spot on towards Vladimir Sufau, whose touch wasn't a really good one. But he'll keep possession of the ball and he'll try to look for Mikel Antonio, but he won't find him. And the ball will find Jao Felix, who finds his goalkeeper, Nikola Larson, who kicks long, but... In the end, it's long and hopeful and, and a poor ball from the goalkeeper. We've seen too many of them, just too many overhit long balls from Silkeborg that just give West Ham the ball back and relieve the pressure. They do, and, and that's, that's just the problem that uh, I think Silkeborg have... Uh even when they've looked better at times in this game, they haven't been able to be consistently good enough to really put that pressure on West Ham time. And again, that's a really good ball from defence to find uh, Flynn Downs. And then he finds Antonio down the right-hand side. Antonio down the right-hand side. Looks for Scamacca and into the box. Instead finds Lanzini, who brings it down well for the Italian striker Scamacca to Connor Coventry to Downs. Now for Sufal, back to Flynn Downs, who finds Antonio. Can Antonio deliver here wide right? Looks for a cross opportunity blocked well by Jao Felix. Corner to West Ham. Instantly, Manchester United have just got third goal. Old Trafford and who else? But Cristiano Ronaldo on his return to the squad, of course, after being suspended. As here come another two first teamers for West Ham. Yeah, so absolutely. David Moyes just uh, perhaps getting a little bit concerned by what he's seeing in midfield. But we both noticed that... Uh, Silkeborg are just starting to see a little bit more of the ball. So uh, two regular starters in uh, Suchek and Rice will be coming on for West Ham in just a moment. But in the meantime, we've got this uh, corner kick, which is going to be uh, an in-swinger from Emerson. Emerson's left-footed in-swing, as Paul's mentioned there. Not a bad ball at all. Towards Edda Skamaka and headed over the bar. I think, in hindsight, if he looks another look at that Skamaka, he'll be expecting to do better because he peeled off his man and couldn't quite guide his effort goalwards. He'll be frustrated with this, uh, Gianluca Skamaka. Uh, but uh, the, we've not get, we don't had a chance to see the replay of that because we're now seeing uh, pictures of these changes. Connor Coventry is uh, going off and he's going to be replaced uh, by uh, Declan Rice. So uh, Rice is on uh, to replace uh, Connor Coventry. I presume it, we're probably going to see Emerson replaced for Suchek. Yeah, so it, it could be a change of all three uh, uh, central midfield players. Rice is on now and Ogbonna steps across to uh, give him the captain's armband as well. And Rice is the uh, the club captain, and uh, Mikhail Antonio is the other player to go off. So it's not quite a, a, a three uh, midfielder swap. Emerson, who started the game, is still on the field, but uh, Mikhail Antonio is off, and Thomas Suchek is on, and that just might mean that uh, David Moyes, perhaps feeling as though, even though he wanted to play with two forwards, now he's realising that with seven minutes to go. And it's still only 1-0. Perhaps he just needs a little bit of uh, surety in midfield as well now. Yeah, perhaps a back five now with Emerson playing as a wing back or Emerson playing the left side 
of a three is there's also a change for Silkeborg. Tengstead's been replaced by Lynn. So the Silkeborg number nine is now on the pitch. And that's a sign of the intent from a Danish side. As Skamaka does well to win a throw in here on the f in deep Silkeborg defensive territory. I think Skamaka's given it. Oh, the referee's actually just changed his mind and given the ball to Silkeborg. But Skamaka's still urging his team forward, trying to say, let's pin this side in and not let them get forward. As we see Tind being man marked by Emerson. And he struggled for fitness this season, Tind. And he'll be looking to try and make an impact here. And what a way it would be if he could grab a late equaliser here in London as Emerson tries to force Olstrom to go long. And he does just that. Declan Rice with his first introduction to the game wins not one but two headers. It's a bit scrappy there, but Silkeborg find their way out. And it's a switch of play which finds... That is Corvland, sorry. I beg your pardon. As Corland now finds Oxen. And Oxen is again have forced backwards because of the relentless West Ham pressure and West Ham are always on the first touch as Sue Fowle there just gives a little nudge to Clitton and the ball will be Silkeborgs from around about the halfway line but again they opt to go short with their free kick not looking to load the ball into the box just yet 85 minutes played at the London Stadium West Ham United 1 Silkeborg nil. West Ham looking to keep maintain their 5 out of 5 win percentage in the the Crompers League so far is scrappy there and Silkeborg have played the ball in behind with Kuss but only as far as Ariola and just so many times now Paul Silkeborg have over hit these balls in behind where they look like they've got a runner in behind West Ham's defence but just over hit and Ariola comes out and claims easy save for Ariola but uh, yeah as, as uh, Adamson was uh, chasing that one down all the way but uh, he always seemed like he was fighting a losing battle it seemed like the pass was just a little bit uh, too long for Mariola have uh, forced to clear it long in the end it's over the head of Skamaka and back into Silkeborg possessions they're going to try and make it difficult for West Ham in these last few minutes they have and they've tried <coughs> to make it difficult for West Ham all half and to their credit they have improved as Declan Rice brings the ball down lovely there on his chest but he's not really got a lot in the way of options and he just tries to win a throw in off his man but he can't quite do that and now Silkeborg can go forward with Tind as Kerr's strong in the tackle but only as far as Kusk Kusk now cuts inside of Sufal then onto his left foot looks to deliver towards Lind well blocked and well cleared by Kerra. Can Skamaka bring this down? No, he can't. He misses it. And in the end, he's strong in a challenge and just looks to hook it line to Finn Downs and does that well. Finn Downs has Manuel Lanzini ahead of him, but didn't quite look up there as Man Lanzini had a momentary one on one as Skamaka looks to switch towards Emerson. Emerson brings it down well. The two Italians linking well there. And Emerson's tried to play a one two, but it's brought down by Olstrom and referee signals play on. And we go again with Thomas Suchek to Kerra. West Ham now just knocking the ball about. They know that the task is almost done, the job is almost done. Even a draw would guarantee top spot in this group, but David Moyes will want to keep the 100% record. As Absolutely, yeah. Five out of five, he'll want, to, he'll want it. And uh, West Ham's uh, final game uh, next uh, week, of course, is the uh, final round of games. West Ham away at uh, uh, FCSB. I'll be looking to try and get uh, a win there as well. But uh, these last uh, three minutes plus injury time, it's not going to be easy for West Ham because if Silkeborg Sil get even half a chance, they're going to try and push forward, which is why I think we're seeing West Ham just being a little bit more cautious in possession now. They are. David Moyes has shored up the midfield now with regulars, Flynn Downs, Thomas Suchek and Declan Rice all on the pitch. And that's just meant it's really hard for Silkeborg to even win the ball. And when they do, West Ham are so quick to win it back as Angelo Bonner now has the ball. He, Playing in Elfham in a role of left back, but he's done okay today, Bonner, hasn't he? He's marshalled the wing as well. He has, he has. Handers. I mean, it's also fair to say that he's not probably had the busiest night in terms of defence, but uh, what he's had to do, barring a, uh, a sort of, I think there was one miscued clearance and there was one header that he didn't need to put out, but other than that, I think he's uh, had an issue. I, I, I think we'd struggle to find any West Ham players that had a bad game this evening. They, they've been very, very, fairly comfortable and, and professional in what they've done, probably just lacking a little bit of uh, killer instinct in the final third. Indeed, and there's a really good ball there from Sal the centre-back, who finds his striker, Tind, and Tind can now find Corland, and Corland goes out wide to Clitton, but Clitton, again, just doesn't even fancy the battle with Sue Fowle and goes straight back, and then it's a really poor ball from the substitute, Corland, and Declan Rice can intervene, and he finds Flynn Downs, and Flynn Downs just looking to calm things down. He finds Rice to Suchek, and Suchek, a really poor pass there, looking for his... Czech colleague Vladimir Sufal, but they weren't on the same pa wavelength there. The two Czech Republic internationals and Suchek's pass finds touch, and Silkeborg could get going again. And he struggled for form so far, Thomas Suchek, hasn't he? He has. Season. I think he. I think because he's been so so strong for West Ham over the past few seasons, we've 
Come to expect, I mean, I remember his first season, he was a, goal, a real goal-scoring threat as well, wasn't he, when he first arrived at the London Stadium? Um, perhaps just lo losing a little bit of form, a little bit of fitness, and because we've become used to such a high standard from him, he's not quite been able to live up to that this season. He hasn't, but still a regular of David Moyes' team. He still values him as a, a big asset, clearly, and we hope to get that goal score and exports back. Which well, he, he's a solid central midfielder. He's good, good vision, and at the same time, he's a big player, so he, he wins headers. He's a, he's a physical presence in set pieces, so it, once he's on form, even if he's slightly off format, I think he, he fits the kind of player that David Moyes would want in this team. I mean, club captain Declan Rice have formed a formidable partnership. We look at the group as it stands. West Ham now, as it stands, 15 points, of course, after five games. Silkeborg on six, Anderlecht on five, and of course, that's going to be a winner-take-all now. Next week, Silkeborg will be Anderlecht Who's going to qualify? Silkeborg, knowing that avoiding defeat next week at home against Anderlecht will mean that they are through as Vladimir Soufal looks to double West Ham's lead and make sure of the win. And he looks forward towards Skamaka, really poor, lofted cross, straight into the arms of Nikola Larsson, who looks to get Silkeborg going on the counter attack. But West Ham didn't throw many bodies forward then. They've got a lot of bodies back as Soufal puts Fog uh, Orderson under pressure and can't quite win it back. But West Ham are pretty happy just in their shape now for one yeah absolutely back. West Ham are quite happy to, to sit back now and uh, we say we're the fourth official is just about to put the board up as well I can't imagine we'll have more than uh, three minutes in this uh, second half maybe not even that much there haven't been too many stoppages barring maybe a couple of substitutions the physio has been on maybe once in fact I don't think the physio has been on once in the second half has he but yeah three minutes confirmed so uh, not much time to go here and uh, the referee is going to give a free kick here to uh, uh, Silke Borg and there's going to be a booking here for a Suchek as well yeah, and he was late on that tackle there, Thomas Suchet, just perhaps similar to Caro, just not quite up with the pace of the game yet since coming on, and it was just too quick from there. I think it was Odison, it was, just flicks the Ooh, ball through his legs, him, yeah. and then just stamp on sort of the back of the Achilles in the end. A real painful one for the substitute, Augustin, and a chance now for Silke Ball to load the box. Surely this time they're not going to go short. With around about two and a half minutes left, they've got to get the ball into the box and see if they can pick up the loose balls, perhaps the second or even third balls, and they are going to go long. It's going to be Kasper Kusk behind this free kick that's around the halfway line. They'll be looking to go long. All but Nikola Larsson in the West Ham def defensive area now, and it's hiked towards, towards Jal Felix. Flint Downs picks up the second ball, and it's towards Declan Rice, who will look down the line for Downs. And Lanzini's there as well. And Lanzini flicks it back to Declan Rice. But it's a poor ball from Lanzini. Suchek mops it up there. And Skamaka's there. Skamaka shields the ball really well and finds Emerson. Declan Rice is making a run in behind. Is Emerson going to find him? Just takes too many touches there. Emerson Rice gets himself just back on side. Is he going to what for the corner? Is he going to go for the box here? Declan Rice, he, he is going to go for the box. And he's going to go for the edge of the box where he has support in Thomas Suchek. And Suchek does the right thing in turning out and finding Flynn Downs right down the other side. On the right-hand side, he finds Ben Johnson. Johnson into Downs. Downs looking wide right for Sue Fowl. And now West Ham will just play a bit of keep ball in the final 90 seconds that remain at the London Stadium. It's Suchek. Looks to go through the legs of Corland, but couldn't quite find it. But it's behind for a West Ham throw in. And West Ham would be happy now to keep the ball in this area, won't they? Yeah, absolutely. Minute to go now. West Ham will feel as though the job is done. It would take quite a counter-attack West, for West Ham to concede from this position in the very limited time we have left. But uh, two fouls ball into Downs. He's trying to draw a free kick. I don't think he's going to get it. But, uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a good performance from West Ham. They've won themselves a corner kick there, I think, in the dying seconds as well. Great work there from Flynn Downs. It really was. And it was really impressive this season. Been one of the real stars of the team, Flynn Downs. One of the real stars of this season. Of course, come from Swansea, spent time at Ipswich Town as well, boyhood West Ham United fan and now he's ploying his trade for West Ham in European competition it's a dream come true for the young man as it is for Connor Coventry in that midfield as well as Sue Fowles lost possession of the ball there to Corland and it's going to be a throw in taken by the Danish midfielder who he's given the ball to his full back but Silkeborg have got to get the ball forward now with around about 15 to 20 seconds to go but again they give the ball away and it's brought down well by Lanzini and Lanzini is attempted cross when he could have just opted for the corner there and it's going to perhaps give Silkeborg a chance to get the ball forward but they can only go back to the goalkeeper Larson who kicks it long is there something left in this game for the Danish outfit Ogbonna heads Larson's clearance away and then it's flicked on by Emerson towards Declan Rice and that's full time at the London Stadium a fairly uneventful game really but Mamor Lanzini's controversial penalty after Michael Antonio was brought down by Nicola Larson was the difference between the two sides. David Moyes' men make it five wins from five in the Europa Conference League. It's full time. West Ham United 1, Silkeborg 0.